Hello and welcome back to the Squeaky Bum Time Podcast with Mike and Laurent. It's Friday morning, which is weird. It's April 2nd. We're not going to talk about international football because nobody cares. We are going to talk about more important things like the return of the Premier League. But first, Mike, we have to talk about the sad passing of the world famous Claude from Arsenal Fan TV. He was a fixture on the fan TV world of YouTube. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he, you had many moments of joy watching him lose his fucking mind. So, Mike, when you um, think about yes. Claude, what do you think about? I think about a lot of things. Um, I think that of the Arsenal Fan TV, I guess, celebrities, he was the most genuine. Yeah. Um, he was not the guy with the selfie stick um, recording his reactions to games and putting them on YouTube. He was yeah. genuinely just a guy that they found. And you're yeah. like, this guy is the man of the people, right? He is the voice of the people. And and I'm a as a card carrying Spurs supporter, I loved Claude. I really <laughs> did. And I was sad. I was really sad the other I day was when too. I heard that he passed. I was away. too. I was too. <clears throat> and I was sad for a few reasons, obviously, that he passed, but I, I don't know the circumstances. Um, he, he was, was pretty, he had problems. He was pretty old, portly fella. So, I mean, it could have been a number of different things. Wasn't, but, the thing is, he wasn't that old. Really? 58's not that old. Oh God, that he looked 70. Um, yeah. <laughs> but let me just say this. He, um, he was not, oh, 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 he got kind of the bad end of the stick from Arsenal fan TV. So yeah. for those that may not know during the North London Derby last year, yeah. uh, the game that Spurs won, he made a, a reference to a DVD. Now that is generally considered, especially in English circles to be a racial slur or joke or whatever towards Asian people. Now, now putting that aside I'm for a second, it's like Nigerian he, selling Oakley's. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, uh, it was basically he was immediately canceled, immediately pulled off of AFTV like the next day and all that stuff. And and the thing is, I understand that uh, that's fine. But like the man wasn't well. Right. Nope. There was there was something going on there. And, yeah, and, he, and, and he, so, had, he had an episode where he talked to Robbie about what's going on, like just yeah, and a massive so, depressive or whatever the hell. Maybe he's right, just yeah. English. <laughs> uh, that's entirely possible and extremely possible that it's part of the problem. Right. But so exactly. um. I think in this world of, of cancel culture and everything, we don't really think about the the mental health at the beginning, middle, or end of the canceling transaction, right? And um, you, you, not that these people should be afforded anything, and, and I'm not talking necessarily just specifically about Claude, but about the larger group of people who do something stupid or say something stupid 10 years ago and then immediately mm -hmm. have to pay for it, but – I mean, gosh, there's, there's, there's a middle ground here. I feel like there's gotta be. And so the, I think the biggest problem with the larger part of it is that there's no, um, there's no redemption, right? There's no like, Hey, uh, I'm a fuck up. I said that one thing I really shouldn't have. Um, let me, let me, you know, make myself good again. Right. If you commit a crime, you go to prison, you stay there for a while, you rehabilitate yourself and you are let back into society. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, not yeah. a perfect system either. Right. I'm yeah, not going to no. pretend. Yeah. But so that's kind of the part that's missing with cancel culture. And I think I'd be more accepting to it if there was like a timeout for a few years. <laughs> and yeah. From Twitter yeah I, and, and I think forever. and I think, you know, to your point, you know, I, I I'm more into this thing and follow along with with Arsenal fan TV and, and watch it. And Claude became famous for you know, his lane for his famous line, it's time to go <laughs> referring to, to it's got to go. It's time to it's go got to go. Yeah. Uh, for, for referring to had enough Robbie, man. Yeah. Enough, enough. And you know, the story of him is he and Ty would sit in the back of the bus going to away game <laughs> and they were the best of friends and would just lose <laughs> their mind and argue the whole time. And when Robbie from Arsenal fan TV was starting it. Oh my God. Everyone said, you have to get those two guys on. And they are yeah. best of friends. And, and, so, at this, and at this point, we should, and Ty basically is a little cricket of a black man who's tiny. Yeah, and yeah just like, you gotta Arsenal get the optics gear. here. Ty he wears Arsenal has, gear all you can't the time. See, <laughs> but you wait, you can't see us right now. Yeah. But we have big, goofy headphones on. He wears Ty them all the time. has big, goofy Arsenal branded headphones that he would wear during the interviews. Like, like he's a, listening like, to the radio at the games. Right. Right, but when you bring <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's like an old school white guy from like Yankee Stadium in the 70s, right? Right, but, like, but he's a little black man. But you 
also during the interviews after the games, you would have him with these headphones on or, or around his neck. It was almost like a combination of like the retarded guy from There's Something About Mary yes. and and just these these so straight like like the baby because he's so small like the baby you bring to a public place but you yeah. put the headphones on him because you yeah. don't want to hurt their eardrums so he, like he's also an incredible you arsenal fan together, you get tired he, he and todd he and claude who is an ennui miserable guy who could find the worst in every game uh the worst in every result he was happy when they were happy but claude was just like unapodic unapologetically optimistic and they would just fight and it's worth watching arsenal fan tv to hear them yelling at each other uh because it's great and that's really right. what, oh, what Arsenal fan TV was... is, is those interactions. And people have gotten famous. Uh, uh, Troops famously is now in the States on Barstool. Uh, DT, your nemesis, you know, sort of made a whole oh. career out of it. Uh, you've got Mo Hader, my favorite guy. You've got Kalechi, the Nigerian guy who literally wear, uses the Nigerian whip as though he's like um, freaking Eddie Murphy in, in trading places. It's like, you can't make this up. but. I think they're all originally genuine. And then there's I, I don't, Robbie, I don't think just they're in all of this. Yeah. And then Robbie, who's just calm, cool, the businessman who puts the mic in front of people's faces. And I think it's an interesting cultural thing <laughs> that's happening in and England. Asks pointed questions. Right. Yeah. It, he's good. I mean, I just can't, you can't lie. The guy's cool under pressure. And, and the whole culture of English football has this already. They've had it for decades, right? There are 92 professional teams in England. That's a shit ton. And you better love your fucking team because no one else is going to do it. Now, there's been a historical stratification of the league that's pulling the top six or the top 10 brands out from the regular of England. But historically, a team like Bradford City, for instance, had its own fan culture and a fanzine that fans in the 80s would literally go to the Xerox store and photocopy uh to to two games so you know that stuff would go on um and it was an it's an incredible culture that i think youtube and the internet has picked up and i don't think there's anything like it in the states right now so i'm just so into that i just wish in our country we had stuff like that that went on um and i wonder mike what you think of that um a couple things a we have it in very, very small doses for very specific fan bases. And I'll get into a few in a second. But the other thing, we talked about this, England's the size of New York State. So everybody goes to the away games. Forget the forget this sectioned off supporter section for away, away fans. I mean, keeping in mind that generally speaking, aside from Manchester fans living in London, like you live fan, like you don't really go anywhere because – the country is so small, right? So yeah. you've got melting pots all over all over the U.S. The United States, New York City is the greatest example of that, right? So um, that's where it kind of gets a little bit difficult. But what I think some of uh, some of the more specific fan bases and, or, or, or well known fan things or tropes, right? I I got I missed this last year. Yankee Stadium first inning. Roll call from the bleacher creatures, great. right? Like God, that made my that made my uh, hair on my arms But my even arm stand but up. even that now is is bastardized from the original group. I feel like the original it is now uh, sort of uh, an homage to a version of Yankee Stadium that isn't there, right? It certainly it's not. It yeah. doesn't. Well, have, well, and I'm sure. I'm sure. About... I'm sure. In Arsenal, they have the same problem, right? All the Highbury people yeah, are probably exactly. like, "Oh, it's quiet. It sucks." Blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah, um, the the Cleveland Browns, right? Like yeah, the, dog uh, the, pound. the dog pound, like they, you know, but they had their team taken away, so they kind of came back and they're like, "We don't even care if we suck. You're just here. This is so great." <laughs> um, the Raiders, right? The like Raiders fans with like the spikes, like the WWE looking fucking guys. Um, Do you, they I, I, they I, seem to galvanize and organize quite aggressively. I don't I don't know enough, and I'm not following along enough. Are there full on post game Raider? youtube channels I'm yeah sure there, are. there are and i know that i know that because i've been i've been tracking down a couple of bottles of charles woodson's whiskey and they're basically all owned by raiders fans so uh and i'm like fuck i gotta talk to these people this is terrible no but do you, um, but do, but but i yeah. feel like i feel like the youtube culture in the uk because it's so small the country like robbie is on 
Sky Sports. Like, if they yeah, want no, to talk to – Well, okay. It would be the equivalent the, the, of, like, I guess... on the CBS broadcast, our podcast was on because we're fans of, oh, we got huge and we got to be on the show. No, right? we like, wouldn't. <laughs> we're right? Like, Arsenal example. fan what TV. What we would say is on Yes Network. Right, right, right. It would be like right. on Yes Network or on ESPN. It would be that John Boy kid, right? and the which funny, basically he has been. Like he's he's. But the funny, but the funny thing so is, that's is, kind that, of the closest one. is that they're sadly trying to get that audience, and they always hire an actual presenter or like, and it just doesn't work. It can't be manufactured. Yeah. No, no, it can't. But it's also it's anybody can have a YouTube show or a podcast. Clearly, the us two idiots with microphones, right? So right, no, nothing um, but Nick's. The actually thing is that good. it's. <laughs> right there's a lot of good content out there that's not this show but uh the other thing is that there's so much content that it's very difficult to stand out right right and you need a lightning rod you need a lightning rod frankly you need claude um, for you john boy <laughs> you need a claude you need a dt but for john boy it was the when when aaron boone had that outburst and he was mic'd up we're fucking savages in the box that whole thing and he yeah. did like a breakdown because he had the live mic or whatever right um that that created an empire for him. And I'm not even that big of a fan of that guy, but like it, it created an empire to the point where like he runs the basically stateside version. He's got, he's got podcasts with, um, with uh, Trevor Plouffe, like other MLB players, retired MLB players on it. Right. The barstool guys, like, listen, I'm, I'm actively a card carrying, not a fan of barstool, but what Portnoy created there is, is unmistake. It's undeniable, right? Like real. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, even, you've got even even you've got, and I can only really speak from the NFL to Alexis, you know, like the uh, the Jared, Simmons. whatever his name is for the MLB teams. Like, yeah. go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I would say even even Bill Simmons is the old school version of it. Right. He was a an enemy at the gates. Yeah. They hired him and he, you know, he went off on his own. He's basically, you know, taking branding himself and moved into like something much bigger. He sold his company for two hundred million dollars. But I think it's there. Yeah. I think it's interesting. I love that maybe it's because I'm following soccer a lot that I hear about it, but I think it's so fucking great that the gates are, you know, the idea of, and I, and you've been telling me this for a long time. Like, why am I listening to ESPN FC? What am I doing? It's terrible. Why am I wasting my time with Craig? Yeah, Bird? it's not good, but all right, look, <laughs> here's, here's, here's the, the line in the sand. Right. And I think this is where the market has bared it out that it's like, this is what the people want. The ESPNs, the Sky Sports, the, what, the NBCs, whatever you want to talk, call it, they take the pundit's point of view. They often have professional talkers yep. and they have former players, right? What the AFTV model, what the John Boy model, or what the Barstool model has is fans, right? And so the reason I don't like Barstool is because actually when, I mean, they're from Boston and I despise everything from there, but it, it was when they hired a bunch of New York-ish guys like they hated the Yankees, they're Mets fans, whatever. I was like, fuck this, dude, I'm out of here. And so <laughs> I basically, I, you, you're either in or you're out based on the fandoms, right? Why do I watch Arsenal fan TV when they lose, right? Yeah, no, nope, nope, you don't want to watch it when they win. win. Who cares? Yeah, they right, exactly. It's all about the Scheidenfrau. We covered that too. But yeah. but so that's the thing is that it's, but it's it's an authenticity that, that traditional media can't give you, right? So um, oh. John Boy for a while, going back to him, did breakdowns of every game. He's a card carrying Yankees fan, wearing his gear and all that shit, and he's doing selfie videos, talking about right after the third out in the ninth inning is is either way, win or lose. And you know he and 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 the exact inverse of AFTV, I would watch when we won, and I'd see sometimes when we lost. I'm like, what did you think about that controversial decision in the eighth? Blah blah blah. But but that's the thing is that it's raw and it's authentic, and. There's no production value. I mean, now there is, but there was at the beginning of these things. And that's the thing is it's the same thing as us, right? I remember many moons ago when you were doing crap football, crap pundit. Uh, this is coming up on two years now. We did during the quarterfinal. It had probably is like this week, two years ago, quarterfinal of the somewhere? Champions League. And I don't, <laughs> yeah, you probably do. The quarterfinal of the Champions League game between Spurs and, and, and City. It's some of the best content we've ever had. It probably is the best content we've ever had. Now I'm on about a 30 second delay, right? Yeah. The Lorente goal goes in and we're doing an Instagram live. So it was like 15, 20 minutes during halftime. And then we start into the second half and Laurent reacts, but he doesn't really give it away. And then I start screaming bloody murder, right? Like, so um, like 40 seconds later. And so that was, 
it's it's authentic. It's real. And to, to worst. fair, that's I gave this reaction. So it's not that far off from that. So I'm I'm my own worst enemy in this case. But that on and you watch. I'm telling you right now, like that's funny, right? It's funny. I threw my—I yeah. I live in Florida. I threw my hat into fucking Georgia. I swear to yeah. God. Yeah, my so, my the number one uh, video. The yeah, number one I, I video that I have. The key. That's the difference, right? Yeah, the number one video I have on my channel that has probably you know thirty views versus seventy views is is the city losing to Newcastle and me saying the league is over in 2017 because <laughs> I'm just completely that. broken. Okay and dejected and that's my little like yeah you know that's my that's my moment that's the one where i'm just like the league is over and i blew it it's not when we won the league it's not whatever it's being be down nine points to liverpool you know and then you know a month later is the is the J january 3rd game which is just like the the greatest the greatest the, is the right. john stones off the line game so uh that's just that's just how it is and uh, I find it fascinating. I love the English culture about that stuff. I, I hope that we get further down the road where like every team has 14 broadcasts of the guys, you know, calling the game, because that's another thing that's happening. Watch alongs on YouTube where the game's on, or maybe you're not watching the game and you're cord cutting, but you watch people you like talk about the game while yeah. it's on. Like well, that's cool, how, Bridge. how stupid is Fox not to have, uh, the guys in the green room watching the games. Like, wouldn't you want to watch that? I would. After the fact, yeah. Uh, in no, but during the, even, you know, there's. The I'm not. Are, I'm not one of those. So I'm. You're not. I'm but, not your target. Do you know what I mean? But like, so for instance, I really like True Jordy. I watched him when he would yell about YouTube about Newcastle. But then he's expanded it to this show called The Kickoff, where they talk about football while the big games are on, and they have the fans of each team, other sure. YouTubers. It's really good. Yeah. It, but it's, I don't watch it live, to your point. When they give the 20-minute cut-ups of the two-and-a-half-hour show, yeah. where they're talking about the topics, and they're not professional, but what they are are real football fans who really give a shit. This is their livelihood. This so, is what they do. I think, yeah, I think one of the things that's funny is that the, the content itself, what's actually being spoken about is very similar to Sky Sports. It's always Liverpool is going to win this or City's going to win that or whatever. It's well, always they do this, cover the this, same this, stuff, but it's different. No, no. So I mean, it's the same roller coaster of the league is over. And then two months later, it's the league is back and blah, 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 blah. But the, but the, again, the delineation is the raw authenticity of the fan versus the pundit. And, and I can understand at some point, we've talked about this too. At some point you're going to get fucking just tired of a pundit. Cause he's just slating Harry Kane or telling you that he has to go somewhere else to win trophies or blah, 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 blah. You're going to feel slighted. You're going to feel tired of the same old shit. Also, and you know what? Also guys somebody. who guys who played they're They don't, they've been playing since they're 15 years old. They have a completely different mentality. Like if you fucking watch punditry TV, you'd think everybody wants VAR. No fucking fan wants VAR. It's no, no awful. Man. So I, I think I watch and listen to punditry and, and this is in all sports and we've talked again, another topic we've covered, but uh, for specificity for uh, when they can teach me something, the, I don't know. Exactly. You're the expert. You've been doing this your whole life. Tell me why that pass was a good idea or a bad idea. Yeah. Well, that's why Jamie Carragher and Gary I know Neville what the result really was. Good. Yeah. Jamie Carragher. Yes. And, and, and there's a few like that in every sport. Yeah. And you know, what's crazy is that. So speaking back to Fox, I remember during the playoffs one year, they had Frank Thomas, Alex Rodriguez and Pete Rose. And they talked. Hey, and they were amazing. Oh my God. It was like baseball porn. Yeah. They were just sitting there in, in the shop, like Alex Rodriguez talking about, Oh, this pitcher always gave me fits. Roy Halladay. He, I, he hated Roy Halladay because he would always have the, the two seamer inside on him and he could never get extended. And he's like, one time I got him and this is what I did. And blah, 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 blah. And for him and Frank Thomas and Pete Rose, three of the best right-handed hitters ever. Yeah. They're, both, they're all just sitting there like, Oh, well, I approached it this way or I did this. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, this is, Fucking and then unfortunately gold. they took a rod out and he started calling the games and he's terrible. Yeah, he's not good at that. He's just not. Well, because he, I, I think he they like he has to like have a like a catch. The weird thing is, time. is this 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 idea that the pundits know more about or that they need to dumb it down. Just don't dumb it down. Don't you're, dumb it down. You've been playing baseball for forty years. Yeah, elevate it. Just make it fucking yeah. weird. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. 
anyway, so the best thing you could have is somebody say, what did he just say? Yeah. What the why fuck did is he, he say talking that? about? Yeah. Why? No, 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 no. Like, like, why did he, what, what does he mean by that? Right. Yeah. And then, and then explore it and explain it. The hard thing to do. And this is why punditry in studio is better than in during the game. Cause you don't have an inning to explain why you hit that. You, you knew it was going to be a two, one curveball, right? Like yeah. the same. And I use baseball examples because it's easier, but it's like, easier, yeah. Uh, but so th- that's the thing is that where, um, uh, who's the NBC guy, Higgin, Danny Higginbotham. He's that's good. why he's so good. And I don't know that I would want to have him on a call of a game. Um, and I, I think that he, he was uh, doing calls. Like he would do, he would yeah. be the alternate to, to, to Gary Neville with Martin Tyler. Right. And, and that's fine. And I do think, and even though I fucking can't stand him most of the time, I do think Lee Dixon does a good job of kind of giving <laughs> it's listen. The role is literally called color commentator, yep. right? Giving color to the play-by-play that the person next to you was saying. I could do giving ex- I, I, explanation. I could do without uh, the other guy. He's not Lisso. Good. Yeah, Lisso is just he, he's too you chill. can tell. Yeah, he just you can tell he's in love with himself. Yeah, he's too chill. Nobody likes. I, mean, I, I also want. He's not working class enough. <laughs> no, he's not. But you could listen. What I would say to our listeners is find yourself someone who loves. You like Graham Lasso loves Graham Lasso. <laughs> I think he's just chill. I think he's just chill. But let's let's let. I mean, I know the season is over for you uh, in terms of. I mean, actually, I was just looking at the standings. It's not. The Spurs are super close. But let's let's go through the the big games of the weekend. And the biggest one, of course, is United versus Brighton. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> it's, <laughs> we've got it's, some good ones though. It's it's it. There's two good ones tomorrow, right? There's I am Leicester. Well, we've got yeah. Oh, tomorrow's a good Leicester, one. Leicester, Man City, uh, City rested. The boys have come back. Everything's coming together. There's a little bit of vengeance in this game. This is the 5-2 when this is the Pep out game <laughs> in yes, November. I well. was done with Pep. I was like, what the hell's going on? You can go back and listen to it. I'll we'll we'll find the original, the original episode. You can find me saying Pep out. Uh, cause because you know what? I'm a real fan and I was very fucking frustrated after losing to Leon and and fucking having stupid shit happen and thinking that City were bad and that maybe Pep couldn't go past this point because he never had he's in unknown territory which is staying with the same team over four years right so that's why i thought pep out because i didn't know that he could and he was in the last year of his contract at that point yeah, and then, like the point, next week right. they extended him right right and then they signed diaz after that game so yes. some things changed <laughs> and um, dude i did not know that diaz was like vincent company which was, was a surprise he's yeah, well, okay. He's not missed a minute of any game. Since yeah, game. and 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 Marino wanted him, and I just wonder what if. But anyway, it's not important. Um, uh, and I'm then, excited yeah. about this game. I want yeah, City it should to be put good. 74 on City on Leicester because let me get this very very quick. I love Leicester City. I think they're great. But of the teams above Tottenham right now, they're West Ham doesn't count. They are the weakest by a lot. Yeah, they are hurt. They are questionable, and they are a bit of a bottle job. And I think that even eight points back, Spurs can catch them. I, in fact, I would like, I'll say this. I think Spurs have a better chance of catching Leicester for, for that top four spot than Chelsea. They're only three points behind Chelsea's Chelsea. really good. Like, yeah, that's what I mean. not a joke. Although, that's what I mean. Werner, Werner's miss for Germany was bad. Like, yeah, we should yeah, be well, talking about that game, but I don't care about internationals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've got a Arsenal. Summer job. And then we have Arsenal-Liverpool, a historically big game. But yeah. both these teams right now, long in the tooth, um, both having weird seasons in that Arsenal are actually very bad. Like they have 12 losses. I mean, That's they're weird having thing. a tough, tough, tough season. So, uh, But it's about expectations. Liverpool's expectations were to be right there with City, and they may well be next season. But they're having a really, really bad year. Yeah, And Klopp finally figured out, oh, I have this bad defense. Let me not fuck up my whole team by moving everyone around and instead putting his players where they should go and Liverpool just living with these two young center backs, you know, foot to the fire, we're just going to go. So this should be a high scoring game. Although Liverpool, their problem this season actually has not been defense. It has been the ripple effect of trying to defend on their attack, if that makes sense. No, it does. Can I ask? So we, we talked about historically one one of the better games in the Premier League. Yes, highest scoring true. fixture in Premier League history. That's also true, and it's mostly because there's been blowouts the majority of the last. Yes, there's five, been some ten six years. threes and some five yeah. nils. And so some... let me pose the question to you: When's the last time this was a 
a, a title fight or a top four matchup? When's the last time these both teams were really good at the same time? 13, 14, the, the Suarez year, uh, Liverpool C- city. Okay. Uh, yep. Sorry. Arsenal were in first place yep. went to Anfield and got the doors blown off them. Yeah. And then <laughs> Liverpool, then Liverpool went on the 14 games in a row. Yes. I actually yes, went and right. looked back. I, I don't remember it this way because I was following City. Liverpool really did bottle that. <laughs> they really like, did. Like there were three games to go, and they yeah. really fucked it up. <laughs> um, I, I didn't was really gonna... realize it until I had to go back and look at. It. I'm like, oh, they really fucked up yeah. bad. And City I was trying to think. Actually, of like... we're under a lot of pressure. I didn't realize we literally had to win every game, and right. City did. But yeah, of course, no one remembers <clears> that because. Oh well, well, yeah, but uh, <laughs> I was thinking back to like, like oh four oh five. Right, like, like the like. Oh, old time. The no, no. There's no. There are no seasons where Liverpool and Arsenal were close. I mean, that's what I mean. It's it's almost fa- always the, one or the other. The, the right? most 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 famous one before the Aguero goal was 1989. Uh, after when, Hillsborough, at, yeah. Arsenal. There's a fucking documentary on it in yeah. Netflix, which is really really fucking good. Where Arsenal go away to Anfield, and this is when they win the league. Arsenal with the, were with the R, the yellow. The yellow Bananas. kit, right? Uh, and Tom and I actually just watched Fever Pitch the other day because I was like Jones. No, I never watched that. <laughs> the original one from '97. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, thought you go. meant the fucking. No, Red why Sox would game. I watch that? Fuck, are you yeah. crazy? I'm not Drew Barrymore. Fuck I never that. watched that movie. Me I just neither. remember seeing him on the field when the Red Sox won the World Series and being. Yeah, I'm like, you're a fucking Yankee fan, dude. What the fuck is your problem? Yeah, get out of here. Oh, I hate that spo- guy. They're supposed to lose. Uh, but Fever Pitch is about that season, also. Uh, the the documentary eighty nine is also covers that season, so that's that's Liverpool and Arsenal have have history, but yeah. uh, in the Premier League, no, I don't think that there's a season where they, you know, where they come together. Usually, again, the late Wenger years, post two thousand four two thousand five. Well, they went to this Champions League final in 2006. Basically, after 2006, Arsenal just, whenever they had to play a big game, they got beat bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Except yeah. for the 2-0 against uh, City, where Art Santi Cazola became fucking Zinedine Zidane, and I was in right, the bar right, with right. my friends and was sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm excited for that one. I'm excited for that, that good slate tomorrow. Just, and you I'm know just what? happy Early. the games just, are back. Um, it's so weird. This 10 days has been like, <gasps> come on, give me some football. <laughs> no, I think... I, I mean, I lament the international breaks almost always, but it, it's – and coming out of them, I go, yeah, I needed that. Like, I needed yeah. to fucking – I needed a break. Especially a Mourinho's, lot of football. Mourinho – yeah, there's been a lot of football this year, but especially Mourinho Spurs. I'm like, I need a fucking minute, guys. But By oh. the way, they've won four of their last Yeah, five. I know. It's they the end of the world. I know. That, no, but that that's Europa not, That Europa League game really fucking – It's up. not the – yeah, but it's not the end of the world, but it's just not – it's just not enjoyable. Right. No. Like, I don't like it. Yeah. Now you get the whole idea of like, I want good football. They're not oh, no, playing no. Good I got football. it. Yeah. I've had it for a while. Yeah. Okay. No, but do you know what I mean? Like when, 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 Cl- when Stoke was doing well sitting in ninth and Tony Pulis kept them in the premier league year after year after year. And then they were yeah. like, you know what? We don't want this guy anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, it would be like if Burnley fans were just like, you know what? We're better than you, Sean Dyche. We're better <laughs> than you. They're not better than they're not they're not (laughs) but 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 sitting in 14th and 15th tied on both goal difference and points the wonderful ralph haas and hoodle and sean dyche's burnley right so like the fuck is the difference you know (laughs) that one that one should be good although southampton just sometimes man just give i mean i I don't want to bring up the nine nil it's like a it's a cliche now like you need to drink now but they do get them Doors blown off <sighs> once in a while. You're just like, what the fuck is going on? And so, yeah. And so, so and then we okay. have the relegation fight. Like, you know, we've got Fulham, Aston Villa. That that earlier in the season without Grealish, Villa have been just not. They can't score. Yeah. All of a sudden, but their defense is holding them together. They have only one win in their last five. You really goes to show if you sort of track the whole season and our whole mapping of the teams that we love that were secret teams like Southampton and Villa and Brighton. Um, Brighton and Wolves, got, and Wolves, they really rely on their good players. Like yeah. they can't, of course they do. They can't have things go wrong. No. If anything goes wrong, by the way, that's Spurs. Most... Spurs do that shit, right? Yeah. If Harry Kane was hurt for longer, they'd be like, "Oh, we're in eleventh. 
that's fun. Right, but I'm saying, but these teams really go into free fall. So yeah, yeah, instance, yeah. Villa without Grealish just don't have an have an attack. Uh, Southampton without Ings firing just can't move on. Or Vestergaard went down for a long time, can't really score. Even to a lesser extent, when Vardy is not playing for Leicester, they've actually found a way this time with Iheanacho getting hot. But the other teams are just not strong enough. Like Liverpool could have survived Van Dijk being out, but not all of their center backs. Yeah, not, not, yeah. <laughs> not Gomez and Matip and and right, and right. But they would have been an eighty point team, not a ninety eight point team. Yeah, right? right. Exactly. When City City lost Laporte last year, they were still very good. They just couldn't reach, couldn't keep up with Liverpool. It wasn't they, they couldn't sprint anymore. They yeah. were running yeah. faster than everybody else, other than Liverpool, who was still sprinting. That's basically right. what it is. Right. But yeah, right. I mean, right. so so the Saturday slate is going to be really fun. It's a good group. Um, I think Leeds might put up ten on Sheffield. Sheffield uh, have checked out. They are yeah. uh, they are in uh, you know one two three Cancun. You know they're, <laughs> they're um, <laughs> Sunday's going to suck, especially for me, um, which oh, is going to be good because I am you a bird. Not you, will you fucking Spurs? I'm going to no, say no, this no, right no. to the camera. Everybody, you fucking put a smack on Newcastle. We want them happen. to go. Put it's not gonna happen. five on them. Enough with this fucking I'm gonna be, Newcastle listen, bullshit. If we should have learned anything from Spurs, it would have been the Newcastle game early in the year when there was the bullshit penalty at the end of the oh, game with the phantom the handball that gave them a late draw. So yeah, but you fine. guys beat them. Oh, Man. we beat the yeah, but we didn't. Okay, so we didn't. We got a point out of that. And yeah, but that and, was like a an XG three to yeah. I know, five. I know, I know. But <laughs> I just don't. I, every time I see Newcastle going back to the twenty sixteen year i believe the lester year where we don't beat let we don't get the title and then all we have to do is beat newcastle to finish above arsenal newcastle loses a man and then <laughs> scores four fucking times who was the coach was that pardu that was pochettino oh 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 uh yeah pardu i think but yeah they let this they let, got a red card and i'm like we were down one nothing they get a red card and we're like well everybody go let's just keep going on them they scored on us four they beat us five one and like ever since then, whenever I see Newcastle playing Tottenham, I I just get ugh, I get you're you're like scared. Shudders. You're scared. Yeah, and of course I've got my beloved Brighton versus Man United. That's gonna be a fun one. Come That's on. gonna be a fun one. This That's gonna pull a, me out of my funk. If if uh, I don't know, I don't. I I just want Brighton not to go down. It looks like they're safe. We'll see what happens. Well, that's the if, if Brighton can get anything. Actually, frankly, if Newcastle Remember, loses. This is the game in the reverse fixture where they beat Man United and they gave them a penalty after the whistle. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. So wait, let's let's paint the, the relegation picture, right? Fulham versus Villa. If okay, well, well going earlier, because Newcastle plays earlier. If Spurs can just do the job and beat Newcastle, Newcastle's on 28 with a minus at least minus 21. Goal difference, hopefully more. If Fulham can beat Aston Villa, they'll be they're on one. 27 with at least a minus 14 goal difference. They're, they're, way, they're so much better than Newcastle. At it's this not point. even funny. It's not even funny. So and then, of so course, now, my beloved Brighton are only right there with a minus four. How the fuck are they down there with a minus four? Yeah, I don't know. So, Crazy. <laughs> so, so, and then basically, if if those two results can, that would be a fun. I mean, I hate betting on Tottenham, but that would be a fun parlay. It would be Villa and Villa and Spurs, just for like I'm sorry, Fulham and Spurs as the pro London parlay. There, oh God, just come on, you cottagers. Oh God, it's a you... death to Newcastle parlay. Oh God, death to Newcastle is a real saying. I think at this point, Newcastle fans want Newcastle to go down. Like they're in that mode where just like, don't you fucking save yourself? We want <laughs> pain. Just yeah. go down. <clears throat> Newcastle. Newcastle is like Spurs with me and Mourinho. I just 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 get them out. Just get them out. I don't yeah, care. Just I don't go care what down. has to happen. Yeah, just go down. I mean, it's just the weird thing is with Newcastle, and we'll just and then we'll wrap it up. Is he's got so he's they have a nice manager. Like he's a nice guy, right? And everyone's afraid to hammer him and be like, you can't fucking coach. You're a fucking bum. Steve Bruce is a bum, right? You want he has over hug. like he's got like a age, but you want to give him a hug, and he's got that soft, sweet voice. The boys came to play. I'm like, what the fuck? Just no, no, not like a not like a hug, like a, oh, you're so sweet. It's like, a, come on, man, it's gonna be okay. Please don't no, kill yourself. Like that's yeah. the hug I need to give him. I don't think he cares. I, I, no, just, I think he does. This is Boyhood Club. 
Oh God. You know what though? That's I mean, why I make, it makes me sad. Just, I'm like, Oh my God. Protecting him. Like it's not even worth it. What I don't understand is why they'd retread. Like just bring the young guy in. I have a guy for you. You ready? You're going to see him. He's going to be a manager and you're going to love him. His name is Ian Yvette. And he's the manager at Bar- Barrow. No, at, at Bolton. He's in league one. Bolton Wanderers. Okay. He's a winner. You'll see I, him. I, I already like him. Yeah. He's like, He's, he took a team that's from the asshole of the ass crack of England <laughs> and he, he brought them up two levels and they had never been in the league and he brought them up playing attacking football. Oh. Uh, and he, yeah, his, his town was uh, known for making submarines. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on their logo. It's like, there's a submarine on it. <laughs> I think it's Burrow, Barrow. I don't know. Barrow. Oh, yes, God. Barrow. That's B-A-R- it. Are, yeah, and he's like a legend there. We're going to wrap it up with warships, folks. Yeah. Uh, well, it's almost Nazis. It's Nazi adjacent submarines, yeah, yeah. U-boats, U-boats, U-boats and, yeah. and, and England. Yeah. Okay, let's wrap it up. That was the Squeaky Bum Time podcast with Mike Salerno and Laurent Cortines. We do this on Mondays and Thursdays, sometimes Usually. on Fridays. Uh, please rate and review the show. We need it. We need it. We need it. And that is that. We'll be back on Monday to go over the games. Woohoo!